Hello, designers. We left off at step 18, in which um, we were going to have a second section element. And now, so now, right now, we have a cat photo about the cat photos. We have a paragraph, all that good stuff. So now we're adding a new H2 element within the section element. So we're going to nest inside an H2. Section is a semantic HTML um, tag. And it basically just declares space. Um, declares something on your page, on the structure of your HTML page, and uh, it can be used for all sorts of stuff, but section specifically will be, okay, this is a new section of material. We could, um, later on when we're using CSS, we could uh, specifically um, call, you know, the H2 element inside section, that sort of thing, in order to um, change its design. Um, we also use it a lot in JavaScript when we get to that level, um, starting to put functionality to our websites. So next, lower rank, it's implied that you're starting a new subsection. That makes sense. So if you have a lower rank, H2, you're starting a new section, makes sense. So we might as well put it in a section. So now we're going to have another one, H3. And these are, oops, sorry. I'm so used to writing in uh, VS Code that I don't open my tags anymore. <laughs> things cats well, you could type this or you could copy and paste it just remember if you type it then um, it could be wrong and we can do the shortcut control enter control enter yay um so now we've got this new section right um so cat photos right was well just see more cat photos here that was the h2 but now this new h2 um their cat list so there's multiple lists, meaning that there's going to be multiple subsections of this subsection. Okay, so that's where that whole outline in the, becomes very useful, and it also becomes useful for accessible um, accessibility standards as well as search engine optimization. So now we're going to do an unordered list. Unordered list, we've probably all done them in word processing. They are uh, with bullets. Um, and, uh, sorry, when you type an unordered list, they wind up having bullets, right? So what we do, we open up a, an unordered list tag here. We close it up here. And then in between, now we're going to have list elements, but we don't do anything yet. There's nothing to display because it's just a structural element that's going to define the spacing and the way that the text appears. Uh, once we start putting other elements inside. Okay, so now we get into this. So here's our list, right? Um, it's showing you, well, this is this is what a list looks like. You've got it on our list, and then you're going to have milk, a cheese. So every single um, line in a list has to start with the list element, li element, and end with the li element. That is what is going to give it its special indentation and its special... Um, uh, bullet. Okay. Now I'm just going to put it like this. It's going to help <laughs> They're like catnip laser pointers and lasagna. Okay, guys, do you know why they're saying lasagna? Anybody old enough to that that just is like, ah, that's funny. They know why. Okay. Well, for those of you that know, they're thinking Garfield, old cartoon cat. And then others of you are just like, what? Laser pointers. We get laser pointers. Laser pointers was a more new age things that cat lo cats love. <laughs> Lasagna. It was good old Garfield. Garfield and Odie. All right. So see, this is all we do. Technically, I could have put all of this on one line and it would still work out. Notice over here. Here it is. Boom. Bullets. Um, but in HTML, we use spacing so that we can understand our code better um and we never want to write in one single long line and that's actually in most coding languages um but especially html and css spacing um between the code doesn't really matter um there we go we did it okay so now let's see 
after the unordered list, we're going to do a new element. Okay. And it's alt. Okay. So I'm going to copy this and it says an image with a source attribute. Okay. So we know how to do that. And it is after the unordered list. Okay. So put my cursor down here. I'm just going to paste this first. You know, one of the things that we can think of is that, and I've mentioned this before, is that we're wrapping stuff inside of, um, we're wrapping things inside of tags and HTML elements. And so you could think of it, oh, it's not STC, it's SRC. You could think of it like we're wrapping this link, you know, this image inside this source tag so that it actually shows up something like that. So I could do that first, uh, but it also gave me an alt. Remember that for images, we always have source and alt at least. Later, we'll have other things that we put in there. So copy that. Boom. Should be good to go. Let's see. <gasps> Lasagna. Oh no, that makes me hungry, guys. Uh, okay. Control enter, control enter. Okay, so now... <laughs> funny the figure element represents a self-contained content that will allow you to associate an image with a caption so it's okay so now we're nesting the image you added within a figure element so for me again that's me saying that i am wrapping my image within a figure okay and this is one of those semantic things this is um giving us a way to know what we're, you know, um, how our page is being structured and how other people can, can see the structure. Okay. So what the semantic figure element does is it lets us have a fake caption. So this is kind of like, well, this is a caption. We're adding a figure caption and it's just an open and close. It doesn't have any attributes. Um, oops. And a lot of this is because when we get into uh, CSS and styling and JavaScript, then when we have elements, semantic elements, it's easier for us to choose them um, and not have to have a bunch of IDs. And you'll kind of see that when we come. Okay, cats love. Let's <laughs> talk. Uh, does anybody like try that out? Does anybody given their cat lasagna because they saw Garfield? You know, it, somewhere in my mind, I'm like, well, is that like a real thing? Okay, here it is. Okay, see, so this is cool. So it's actually, it's actually challenging to get something to line up perfectly with the image um, with no spacing. So what this has done is the fig caption has made it so that it is aligned right with the image. Whereas if it was a paragraph, it would automatically make a space. So that's nice. Emphasize the word love in the fig caption by writing. Okay, so emphasize an EM is how we style in HTML. So before we had all this awesome CSS, which is cascading style sheets, we had tags in HTML that provided emphasis. Emphasis is the same as like italics, but we wrap our word. Again, I like to call it that wrapping and they do it too and emphasis so em close em cats live lasagna <laughs> let's go great okay so oh let's talk about the three things that cats hate so we're gonna do it right after the figure um okay we have the cats love okay all right, next, this must have, the figure thing must have added an indentation too. Notice that the image up here does not have an indent, and yet the image down here does. Um, so lots of elements will add these um, certain style elements, style, style, fe style features. Wow, okay. Let's do an H3. Three. Okay. Okay. 
There we go. New H3. So now we're going to talk about, of course, three things that cats hate. Okay. Let's see. So now we have, after the second, we have the, we're going to have another on our list. Um, oh, sorry. Now we're going to have order list. So instead of bullets, they're going to be um, numbers and that's the default um, but technically we could have um, technically we could change it um, we could change the style of it and that would be called list style type and we'll do that eventually um, but we could change the way the bullets are and that's uh, an um, it's a CSS thing Okay, and other cats. I don't know. I feel like this is kind of subjective. Like, your cat. Do all cats hate other cats? I don't know. I don't have cats, so I don't know a lot about them. I don't know. Let's see. Did I do it right? Yes. Okay, so hopefully some of this is getting uh, a little more simple. This is just learning the basic tags. OL. Is that on order list? Oh, I'm sorry. And then after the ordered list, add another figure element. Okay. Figure. Wow. Figure. Great. Check that. Check that. And now we're going to do another image element with a source set to more cats. Let's see. I'm going to paste that over here and then again, I'm going to wrap it. Now, this is a preference. You don't have to do it like this. This is just the way sometimes I do it. And to be super honest, I don't always do it the same way every time, which I totally should. See, here's the problem with doing something like the way I'm doing it is that um, like your VS Code editor, every time you put like a, um, every time you put quotation marks or uh, an open bracket or something, it'll automatically close it for you. Oh, look at them. They're so cute. Um, and so, yeah, you just gotta be careful that you don't wind up with extra characters uh, or symbols. Okay, so source that and then the alts. They don't actually tell us to do the alt, so we'll probably get in trouble if we do. So enter, enter. Okay, great. Now it is five cats looking around a field. That's our alt text. I think they're try they're I mean at least they're making this amusing by giving us something kind of funny. Um that was probably easier than rather me wrapping it. There we go. Okay, here we go. After the last image element, add a fig caption element with a tat. <laughs> oh man, with the text. Cats hate other cats. Fig. That's so silly. Well, at least they make, they make me laugh. I hope you can get a giggle out of it too. Fig caption. Um, cats hate other. Wow. Mm-hmm. Love how you guys can see when I'm trying to talk and type. It's rough. The strong element is used to indicate strong. So it's bolding. Mm, let's do hate. They hate them in bold. Okay. Strong. And so you notice, you know, we can wrap these particular words and that's the interesting thing about hypertext right and marking up so this is why it's a markup language because we can mark up with code what um what we actually want our uh, text to look like or you know what our page to look like cats hate other cats that's so funny don't they look like it they're gonna yeah okay all right it's time to add a new section okay so now we're gonna have another section so we have cat list we have what they love, lasagna, what they hate, other cats. Um, and finally, what does it say? Add a third section element below the second. Okay, gotcha. So here we are. Go all the way down to the bottom, add a new section element. And I'll just make a new line and section. Okay, there's no other. Okay, great. Um, move on, move on. 
and then add an H2 cat form. Okay, that's right. That's the whole point of this. We're creating a form. Okay. Okay, so now we're getting into forms. So forms are formatted uh, very specifically. So now we're going to do a form. And every time I make an element, anytime it tells me make a form element, I know that I have to start with an open tag and close it. I don't just type an open form. I always open and close it first before I do anything else. Because if I don't, then I'm going to forget. So now we check it. All right, great. Okay, so the action attribute, right? So inside here, we have to say, okay, well, we're gonna have this form. And remember, all forms are, they, you know, someone puts some information, they click submit, and the information gets sent somewhere. So we have to know well, where is the thing that where's the place that it's gonna go. And we declare that at the very top of the form as action. So for us, we don't have an actual server that we're sending it to. We're just using it as a default. Now this, this is a, a path. Submit URL. It's a path. Um, if we were using um, our own VS code, it could be a path to something else in our you know, if something else in our files or usually it's a server. So it tells the browser where it should be sent to the path submit URL. So for us, oh, here, sorry. Okay. It, this, this is the path. And we're going to put that right in here. Perfect. Check it. Check it. Great. And then the input element allows us, right, to um, get to create basically text boxes for people to put in. Um, so we can do image elements, input elements are self closing, don't need closing tags. So that means when I put an input element, that's all I need. Okay. And let's see what's happening over here. Anything? Ah, yes, look at that. So it actually gives me an input box. And so this is like the default size, the de default um, width, height, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is, can be manipulated through CSS, but for now we're just keeping it super basic. And you notice that it's already set up. We don't have to code it so that it's, uh, you know, the cursor changes. Um, but normally, for, for a lot of things, we would. We would say, okay, when we hover over this, the cursor changes from this to that. And that's all a part of HTML5. And um, where these elements that are commonly used are already coded for us, so we don't have to do all the extra code. And that's the same thing with libraries and frameworks. Um, when you use a library or a framework for... Uh, code, it makes it so that we don't have to write a whole bunch of code for very common things that we would do. Okay. Great. You can use all sorts. So, so type, right? Um, so we have input and for now it's pretty traditional. I can type in this actually, and it's automatically text. Um, but I have to tell it it's text. Okay. Even though I can type in text, I still have to call it. So type attribute and then equals. So anytime it says attribute value, there's, it's a pair. Okay. The attribute is first equals quotation marks, um, text. Okay. Good. Okay, great. So still, is there anything different? No, because we still haven't like, we, we don't even have a label for it, guys. Does that bother anybody? We will have a label. So now we have to, um, for the forms data to be accessed by the location specified in action, you must give the text field a name attribute. So 
because what's going to happen is the server where we're sending it is going to be asking for specific data and for spe specific fields. And so we have to name it. Uh, so let's see. Now we need a name and we have to have a value representing the data being submitted. So a name and what type. So here um, we're going to do name attribute with a value cat photo URL. Okay. So next name equals cat photo URL. So this would be like a field, like a data field. If you've ever used um, a database, um, that's what <clears throat> this would be like the one of the columns uh, in our database or one of the fields in the database. Okay, cool. <clears throat> now we have placeholder text. This is for the people, right? They, all of this coding was for um, the the place where we're submitting it. Now we have to give the people, you know, hey, this is what you're doing with this people. So then we say, at the add the placeholder text to our input. And so it's still just an attribute value pair. So now I'm gonna say placeholder. Oh, sorry, placeholder is a hint. Um, this is not a label yet, so. Um, a placeholder actually, here we go. So it puts text inside. So it's kind of like telling the person, oh, this is what you want to do. But it's still not a label. So we'll get to a label, I bet. Oops. Go. Okay, so to prevent a user from submitting the form when required information, you have to add the required attribute. Now, the required attribute is just an attribute. It doesn't have a value pair. So it doesn't have the equals with quotation marks. So just add required at the end. Okay, to the input element, making sure. Okay, great. So I just put it at that very end. That's kind of standard. Put it at the end. Great. And notice, guys, okay, so I want you to see, it doesn't automatically add one of those cool red asterisks that we always see when something is required. That's something that we have to code in ourselves, okay, because we can code in a bunch of different ways to make it, uh, to say that it's required. So now we're going to make a button. Cool. So um, a button is another uh, semantic HTML. And it actually has specific um, styling and structure. So look at what happens when I just do an open close. See this little guy here? Boop, boop. It even hovers if you see over by the by the input. Okay, so we do want it to say submit. Once we put submit in here, now we actually see it. Okay, so we could put all sort anything we want. It doesn't have to be submit. That's just typical. The default behavior of clicking a form button without any attributes submits the form to the location specified in the action. So as long as this button is inside the, um, the form, right, with this action, that's what's going to happen. Okay, so even though we've done it, okay, um, so there okay first of all okay inline elements um this is an interesting thing to note inline means that something is in line with something else so we have the input is in line with the button okay so they're all on one line together now if you notice up here with figure figure and fig caption are not in line Okay, they are, you know, from top to bottom, horizontal order. Same with unordered lists or ordered lists and unordered lists. Um, those are not in line. However, up here, I don't know if you remember when we first had this image and then we had, we made like a, we made a link um, and it wound up being in line with each other. That was because those two elements were not were inline elements, so they automatically made inline instead of spacing. All right, I hope that made sense. However, relying on default behavior may cause confusion. Yeah, so 
to who I'm not sure probably the web browser web browsers aren't like the smartest things in the world and so we're gonna have a submit button to make it clear that it's a submit button all right cool okay so we can use radio buttons too we only want uh, one answer out of multiple choices that's fun so if we want to do an input night now type radio it's going to actually change the way the input is okay so we're actually going to do before okay so input type equals radio okay close it Okay, so now we're going to set the option before the text to input at a radio button with the option set as indoor. Okay, here's an example of cat. Oh, my bad. Remember, elements, input elements are self-closing, so get rid of that. My bad. And then I'm just going to put indoor. Okay, here we go. Aha, notice these are all still in line. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to fix that eventually, huh? Okay, and now label elements are to make sure that um, they are associated correct. Okay, so, um, okay, it's for assistive technologies like screen readers. That's going to really differentiate it. So label input type radio cat label makes it so that clicking the word cat also selects the corresponding radio button. Oh, that's nice. Hmm. Have you ever used something and it doesn't have that capability where you have to press the tiny little button in order for it to do the thing? It drives me crazy. So let's put a label around this. And, and then, so that's not a self-closing. So this is wrapping it. And now, cool. So let's see. So now we're nesting it. AKA wrapping it in my world. So see, I didn't click. It doesn't unclick by the way, guys. Um, so that would be a JavaScript function that we would have to do to make it so that if I clicked it again, it unclicked. It will only unclick if I reload the page. Um, let's see, this is probably not supposed to have that space, was it? Oh no, it had a space. My bad. Okay. So it had a space itself. Great. Let's keep going. The ID. Okay. Now this is another one where we use a lot in JavaScript because when we have an ID associated with an element, we can actually call that particular element by its ID, which is really helpful when we only want one element to do a certain thing. Um, this is also really helpful when we want to style one element. And so in this class, of course, we're only doing HTML and CSS and a tiny bit of JavaScript, but I always want you to, I always want to throw in what JavaScript does just so when you get to that class, it's not going to be that challenging. And you can sign up for my class in the fall if you want. Okay, the ID attribute is used to identify specific HTML elements. Each ID attribute's value must be unique. Right, so you can only have one ID per page. You can have the same ID on multiple pages, just one per page. Add an ID attribute with a value indoor to the radio button. Attribute. Oh, sorry, my bad. Um, IDs, I'm not going to put it after i'm actually going to put it before id indoor there's only gonna be one indoor input on this entire page okay so we're this is another thing that's going to help our actual database um, when we send the information another radio button we're gonna do label outdoor label text give the radio button id with outdoor okay so we're going to do the same thing except for outdoor i'm going to copy this entire line of code paste it anytime i can make it so i don't have to do my typing i'm actually a better typer than what it looks like right now guys don't change radio it's just this talking and typing thing <laughs> 
Okay, so all I'm doing is changing outdoor, changing outdoor, still have type radio, still got a wrap in the label. Let's check it out. Still in line, which would drive me crazy, but that's okay. It's probably, uh, okay, we'll probably, we could probably put these in a list um, if we wanted to, and we could get rid of the fact that um, lists always have, you know, a number or a uh, bullet. But for now, this is what we're going to do. Let's keep going. Okay, so now they can be selected at the same time. Doop, doop. Uh-oh, that's not what we want. This is checkbox. So that's one of those semantic things that has an internet culture. The W3 says that checkboxes, boxes are for multiple selections and radio buttons are for one selection. But we still have to tell the code that. Because just because something is a standard doesn't mean it's a rule or a law of the code. Okay. To make it so selecting one radio button automatically deselects the other, both buttons must have a name attribute with the same value. Mm. Add the name attribute with a value indoor outdoor to both radio buttons. Okay, well, we'll do name first. So after type, I'm going to do name. name equals copy this guy paste it and I'm gonna take this whole thing copy it paste it beautiful check it check it perfect okay so now you have to go even further so since they don't have a value attribute the form data will include indoor outdoor equals on which is not useful when you have multiple buttons uh, okay so add a value attribute to both buttons for convenience set the buttons value attribute to the same value as its ID yay okay it's working if you select the indoor ready button and submit the form the form data for the button is based on its name and value there is no value got it so we have to have a value is basically what it's saying so the name value pair that is the field and the data so if you know databasing that's what that is um field data and you know the, the problem is that you didn't have to have any knowledge of databases before you came into this class which is why we're not doing databases so you just gotta believe us that's 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 what, why we're doing this value equals the name so we're gonna make the name the same name the same as value so I'm gonna copy this again paste it over here perfect oh but you know gotta have uh, quotations there we go oh that was nice if I actually did both um and then the same oh sorry it says the same as the ID you guys oh my bad okay id indoor so name value is also indoor so in the field okay, i'm just imagining this in a sheet the column is indoor outdoor and then the value for the submission is either indoor or outdoor those are going to be the two types uh, the two potential values so then here i'm going to do the same thing except i'll change it to outdoor put it over here outdoor Field set is used to group related inputs and labels together. Right. So, so right now we've got like everything in one. We're like radio buttons and uh, text enter. They're all in one in line. Right. So now we're going to make a field set. So we're saying field set. All of these are the same. Oh, look at that. Give us a box. Um, and it's block level elements, meaning they appear on a new line. Okay. So block level. There we go. Block level rather than inline. Block level separate than from inline. Um, nest the indoor in the field set. And don't forget to indent the radio buttons. Okay. Indented. Great. Did I do it? Let's say yes. Okay, great. Okay, and then add a legend. So a legend is like a label, 
But in this, the legend element acts as a caption for the content in the field set. So instead of having to, like a label is wrapped around the entire input. So in some places, the label is going to be the words in front of the, um, in front of the enter, the um, text box. For this field set in which we have radio buttons, we have to have a legend. Okay, it gives the user context about what they should enter in that part of the form. So we're going to add a legend element with text. Is your cat an indoor or outdoor above the radio? Okay, so we'll go right here. Legend, another semantic HTML. And it's going to end. It's going to end here because it's in the field set, but we don't need to wrap the entire field set with this legend. It's just this one line. Is. Okay, I'm going to copy this because otherwise it's going to take me a minute and I might mess up. Copy and paste that in there. Let's see. Did it work? It did. Yay. So here we go. Oh, and that's neat. And it does the line. So it's coinciding. So is your cat an indoor or outdoor cat? You get to choose. Okay, so next you're going to add some more inputs. And we're going to do a new field set. Okay, so now it's a different field set, right? We're not just saying more about this. We have a new field set. Um, so one thing just to say, one thing that I might do if I were doing this, I might copy the entire stinking thing and I would put it again. Now it's not going to like this, but I might do something like this in the future and then I might just change the values inside this. In this case, I could copy and paste it and then I could just get rid of it uh, because that's not where we're at. If I was doing this in VS Code, that's probably what I would do. Although sometimes I do make mistakes by doing that because if I don't change every single piece of the code, then yeah, but that's okay. Uh, Mistakes happen. We just have to be very careful that we're checking our code, um, especially the output, right? Oh, wait, what's wrong with output? You know, we take a look at it. So now we're going to do a new legend. What's your cat's personality? I'm going to go steal the legend from up here. Okay. Work smarter, not harder. It's funny because I always say, oh, get really used to using your keyboard. But with a... Um, <laughs> with the application like this you kind of have to use your mouse and your keyboard a lot if you want to go faster there we go okay so now we have the legend what's happening here what's your cat's personality great and so now we're gonna have um for example here's a text box tacos input type checkbox tacos is it like is your cat's personality like tacos no okay so now we're gonna have an input type attribute set to checkbox loving Okay, so again, I'm going to actually go up here. I'm going to take this input, right? And I'm going to take this. And I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it under my legend. And then I'm just going to change the values. So input type attribute. Okay, it doesn't have ID yet. That's fine. Um, but I have type checkbox. It's going to need an ID, guys. Because it's going to need a place where it's going. Um, name is, we don't have name either, just input. Okay, that's fine. No name, no value yet. But again, what's the value going to be? Loving. What's the ID going to be? Loving. Okay, so um, that's what we can imagine. So there we go. Loving. Okay, move on. Great. Now, ID. Oh, go figure, didn't we? just think that we were going to do that which is which is good that it's it's making us go through step by step a couple times because it is you know challenging to think but but really it's like once I do one I'm like let me just copy paste and let's get let's go right so now we have associate the loving text with the text box okay so now we're going to do a label so that if you press the word loving it's going to select it Okay, so now if I go back down here and I take a look at it, 
I can press the over here and it's still going to press the checkbox. Very nice, very accessible, good design practice. Four, okay, so I'm saying that it's four equals what? I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Four equals loving, right? It's the label for loving. And there we go. Oh, I did it wrong. Okay. Associate the text loving with the checkbox by nesting it, nesting only the text loving in the label element. Only. Oh, so we're doing it different now. So we had the label wrapped around the entire thing. There's another way to associate an input. What you can, oh, sorry. I didn't read the whole thing, you guys. You can nest the text within a label element and add a four. Okay. Let's take this. This is what happens when I try to get a little ahead of myself. I just want to show us the multiple methods of doing the same thing, which is fine. Okay. There we go. Okay. So this is what you can do. Get rid of this one. Not necessarily the best practice. Let's see. <clears throat> there should be a space between your checkbox and the new label. Okay. All right. All right. So now I have a space. Okay. It still works. And checkbox has the effect of being able to uncheck it instead of it being, you know, outdoor versus indoor. Okay. Now do I have it right, guys? No? Oh, there we go. Yay! Okay. Add the name attribute with the value personality to the checkbox input element. So this is where we're saying that they're all, this is the name, the name is the field in the database. Okay, personality. And then, so here's what it says. Doing this makes it easier for a server to process your web form, especially when there's multiple checkboxes. And I'm going deeper by telling you that it has to do with databasing. You don't need to know that, okay? The checkbox input does not have a name attribute. Oh boy. Okay, sorry. Okay, here we go put it in here. It's the actual input, not the label. I, I think it's it's good when I make mistakes too, right? Because then you can see the mistakes that you can make too. Um, okay, add another checkbox after the one. The ID attribute is lazy. So I'm going to say, is it, is it loving? Is it lazy? So let's see. Also add a label element to the right with the text lazy. Make sure to associate the label element with the new check. Okay, so we're going to take all this. I'm going to take all this, and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it. You do what you want, but now I'm just changing everything to um, lazy. Uh, lazy. I don't think it's going to let me do everything at once. Name is still personality. ID, lazy, type, checkbox, name, personality, label, oh, and then lazy. Let's see what, if it lets me do everything at once. Yay, it did. Great. And then add a final one with energetic. So, okay. Gonna, well, I still have this copied. So, let's paste it. Now, I'm going to do energetic. Still going to personality that's the field energetic and capitalizing energetic yay okay like radio buttons form data selected with check checkbox are a name value attribute pair while the value attribute is optional you don't have to have this value it's best to practice to include it with any checkboxes or radio buttons on the page because of the server. Add a value attribute to each text box. For convenience, set each checkbox value to the same as the ID. 
Okay, so these radios, oh, so the checkboxes don't have to have the value, but we want them to. And we just leave the value the same as the ID. Okay, so value equals lazy. It, we're, it, it's weird because it's like, why are we adding the same thing over and over? It's just for the... Okay. Oops. Value equals... It's for the server. That's just to make sure that the server knows what it's doing. Equals... Okay, control enter, control enter. In order to make a checkbox checked or radio button selected by default, you need to add the checked attribute to it. There's no need to set a value for to the checked attribute. Instead, just add the word checked to the input element, making sure there's space between. Okay, so we want to make the first radio button and the first checkbox selected by default. I don't know why we would want to do that. There's probably a certain reasons oh like okay uh if i was filling out a form where i wanted people to um first of all accept cookies or maybe they um to get on my email list i would have them default selecting yes just in case they weren't paying attention <laughs> ah, that's rude um first radio button in the first so all i'm gonna do is put a space between the input let's see and checked Okay, so input element, um, the first one, checked. Anything that's, you know, um, required, checked, things like that is always going to be at the very top. What's your cat's personality? ID, checked. At the very end, space, checked. This is just the attribute. doesn't have a value because the value is the attribute. Great. Whoo, all right. So we're almost done. Look at that. Yay. Now we're just going to have a footer. We always want a footer. Okay. So um, after the main element. So we're no longer in the main. Now we're going to do a footer. Footer is just standard. Like we, we just have a footer. Just like we have a header on every page. We have a main on every page. Those are standard semantic elements that if we were to look at the W3C school, I mean not schools, uh, the W3C consortium, we would find out that that's a best practice. Now we're going to do AP element. No copyright. This is a Creative Commons license for free code camp stuff. I right, just paste this, guys. Okay. Perfect. We always end our P. Normally I do it first. Enter, enter, yay. And then finally, we're going to make the free codecamp.org. We're going to enclose it or wrap it in an anchor element. A, href equals quotation marks, quotation marks. Okay, I'm going to take this as my link, copy this, put it into the quotation marks end I love how it keeps it red so that I make sure to end it and then I can't just leave it open if I were to leave this open watch this okay so see how I have this what if I started do, 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 typing here and I left it all open it would still have the same link so I could keep typing and it would all be a link besides it's bad bad practice to type after a paragraph without having some other semantic element to declare what that new type is. There we go. All right. So notice everything you've added to the page so far is inside the body, right? The body is what is seen. However, other important information goes inside the head element. So we're kind of doing it backwards. Normally when we are in VS Code um, and if you did the template page, then you know that um, we use Emmet, and Emmet gives us our head with the meta tags, appropriate, you know, everything that we need. Okay, 
So there we go. We're going to have the head. The head is the mind of the document. It is what is being told. It's okay. It's the meta. Meta means above all else. It's the mind of the document and it's talking to the web browser, telling the web browser about our page. So there we go. It is unseen by the human eye. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Okay. Title. Title is the page. Um, it's also what's going to show in our title bar, aka the tab label. So we're going to name it Cat Photo App. It's the same. Um, often our title will be the same as our H1 tag. Okay. And notice up here, H1 is the only title of our page that's seen within the HTML document, but when we put it in the head, now it is seen um, within the, uh, now it's seen within the, the um, tab, okay, the title. Um, the entire contents of the page are nested within the HTML, that's the document. All elements must be descendants of this HTML. And then we have to have a language. Attribute value, we're designing English page. So this is what we're telling it. Language equals English. Okay, always have to have that. This is great because it's telling us what we did with our Emmet um, template. Now it's explaining why we have these things. Let's go doc type. So one thing, everything that is seen and ahead should be nested within the HTML, but we also have to tell the browser, this is the doc type. And this is another thing that is a standard. It's not like it wouldn't work, um, but it's a declaration. It makes sure that the browser meets the industry wide specifications. Okay. So it's like, Hey, the doc type is HTML. It's telling the browser that this is the language that it should be reading our document in. Great. And then finally, we have a meta, meta attribute value. That's a pair. So the meta is, um, it t tell the browser to parse the markup into multiple languages by creating a meta element. Okay. So you can parse it into multiple languages. We're going to use the UTF eight character set. And let's do a meta. It's a self-closing tag car char set. Again, something needed and something that Emmett did. UTF8. That's the standard character set. And that's actually telling the browser to do that. But then the browser actually is talking to your computer. It's your operating system that knows about that. And that's the operating system is where the UTF8 um, is where the UTF8 library is actually stored. Wow, look at us. We just did it. And we should, I, I should donate you guys. I'm going to donate at some point. Um, but ask me later, just keep asking me. I'm going to, I'm going to get there. We did it. Okay. So we're finished. Um, in order to make sure that we, you know, copy it right into code pen, let me show you real quick. I'm going to close this again. I'm going to go back to my responsive web design. Go to, oh, look at that check mark. The check mark is there because I'm signed in, guys. I hope you're signed in. Um, and yeah, here I'm going to reopen this and notice all the blue. Okay, we did 69. Yay. And so it's really coming down now. Me talking a lot is making it so that, um, here's everything. Look at that, guys. Um, it, me talking a lot is making so the video is longer. Hopefully it takes you less time, but it's about a minute per step. And so that's what you can, you know, kind of look at for yourself and notice you don't have to do it all at once. You can do it in, in different settings. Um, let me pause this real quick and I'm going to change the screen. So the way I have to do this, I'm going to go to code pen. I'm opening it in a new tab. And as long as you're logged in, make sure you have an account and you've logged in. Oh, look at this. That's cute. Um, there's so many fun things you could get lost in CodePen really easily. Uh, I'm going to open a new pen once I'm in there and I'm going to name it 
cat photo app. JC, you don't have to. I said that you have to use your first, your full name. You don't have to. I use my full name because I'm a public figure. I'm a teacher. <laughs> okay. Um, and okay, I am gonna put um my heading in here. You do not have to put all that. I would like you to have the date and maybe your initials. I'm so sorry um, that I had said before. And now I'm going to go in. And I have to actually, it's a little weird. Okay, well, no, it's not that weird. Because um, in codepen.org, we only have to do what's inside the body element. So we just do all the main. You have to find it in your index. Um, you don't even do the body. You just go down to the footer. Copy that. It's not going to hurt it. It'll just give you um, a warning if you do it any other way. Okay, so I have this. I'm going to save it up here. Always save it first. Okay, and then I have auto save enabled. Uh, I always think that's a good idea. And then I just have to take this to submit it inside Canvas. I hope that helps. Please reach out if you have any questions. Thank you so much.